Hi, I'm Teresa Detweiler, a prevention specialist with the Council on Chemical Abuse, and welcome to another installment of Prevention in Pajamas, where each week we discuss a new prevention topic that provides you with some general knowledge and fun ways to sneak in prevention while at home with the children in your life. This week's topic is nicotine and vaping. But before we start, I want you to know that you play the most important role in prevention. Parenting is prevention, but what is prevention? Yes, prevention is engaging our children in conversations about the dangers of using, but prevention is also providing them with the correct information and building resiliency skills to help our children make healthy decisions for their lives. While most schools provide drug and alcohol prevention throughout the school year, there is so much that you can do at home to strengthen the skills children need to choose not to use, especially in our current situation where we are all surrounded by uncertainty and heightened levels of stress. This week's lesson not only provides important information on nicotine and vaping, but fun ways for your family to manage and relieve stress. What do you need to know about nicotine and vaping? Three of the most common misconceptions surrounding vaping are that one, it is a safer alternative to smoking, two, that it's just nicotine and at least they're not taking in the 7,000 chemicals found in cigarette smoke, and three, vaping helps people relax. Let's discuss the problems with these statements. Nicotine is a highly addictive chemical found naturally in the tobacco plant. Nicotine is also found in many vaping products. Whether used in a cigarette or vape pen, nicotine is a dangerous chemical, especially for children and their underdeveloped brain. Research demonstrates that tobacco and nicotine products set youth up for a lifelong nicotine addiction, chronic illness, and premature death. The teen brain is still developing and nicotine use makes them vulnerable to other substance abuse and mental health problems. Nicotine use is associated with increased depressive symptoms, suicidal risk behavior, and it's an ineffective long-term coping strategy for managing stress. Nicotine affects the way we process information, it affects our problem-solving skills, and leads to poor memory and an inability to control emotions, which is especially concerning for youth. Nicotine is a stimulant. A stimulant increases heart rate and respiration. Over time, using nicotine can lead to heart disease, heart attacks, and strokes. In addition, using nicotine never puts the body in a state of relaxation. When a body is in a state of relaxation, the mind and body are at rest. The brain is quiet and the heart rate and breathing are slowed. The opposite occurs when the body contains nicotine. Using nicotine creates an illusion of calmness in the brain, but as nicotine depletes from the body, cravings occur, creating a preoccupation in the brain with obtaining more nicotine. The brain's constant cravings for nicotine increases the body's anxiety levels. In addition, because nicotine is a stimulant, the heart is pumping very hard. The body will never be in a state of relaxation while using nicotine, as the brain and heart are always racing. Remember, whether smoking or vaping nicotine, it is a dangerous drug. However, vaping poses other dangers to the body as well. E-cigarettes. People vape using an electronic cigarette or vape pen. There are many different devices one can use to vape. An e-cig or vape contains a battery which heats up a liquid commonly referred to as e-juice or e-liquid. That e-liquid is heated and turns to an aerosol, which is then ingested into the lungs. This is not water vapor. The e-liquid can contain nicotine, heavy metals such as nickel, tin, lead, cancer-causing chemicals, and artificial flavorings. It's also not real juice or just flavors. These are all man-made chemicals. The problem is that with several of these products, we really do not know exactly the chemicals contained in the e-liquid because the FDA does not regulate all vaping products. And finally, vaping has not been proven to be safe and there are several known health risks associated with vaping and it's especially not safe for young people. Vaping is associated with several health risks. 
First, popcorn lung. This is a serious lung disease that causes coughing, wheezing, and shortness of breath, similar to the symptoms of chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, which is common in cigarette smokers. One flavoring, diacetyl, is linked to scarring of the bronchioles, resulting in thickening and narrowing of the airways. Then there's nicotine poisoning. Ingesting 70 milligrams of nicotine at one time is enough to kill an average sized man within minutes. It is often difficult to tell how much nicotine is going into the body when a person vapes. Some e-liquid contains 3 to 5% nicotine per cartridge or pod, while others contain even higher amounts of nicotine, and nicotine gets absorbed into the body very quickly, making it very addictive. Vaping several pods a day could lead to nicotine poisoning. Symptoms of nicotine poisoning include vomiting, increased heart rate, dizziness, and seizures. And finally, there's EVALI. EVALI stands for e-cigarette or vaping product use associated lung injury. Symptoms include shortness of breath, coughing, chest pain, and fever. As of February 18th, 2020, we had 2,807 e-cig and vaping product use associated lung illness hospitalizations, or EVALI, and 68 confirmed deaths. All of these cases report a history of using vaping products, and there's still no identified cause. The only commonality is vaping. It's also important to note that due to the COVID-19 and the coronavirus pandemic, the CDC stopped reporting on Evali cases. However, several health organizations have stated that people who smoke or vape are at much greater risk. So what causes Evali? What's happening in the lungs? First, an aerosol-containing chemical enters the lungs. Irritation and inflammation starts. Your body recognizes something is wrong and sends a type of white blood cell called macrophages to help out. The macrophages eat the chemicals brought in by the aerosol because they know these chemicals shouldn't be there and are causing issues. The macrophages can sometimes digest the aerosol, but not always. So some of the aerosol stays in the lungs and kills the macrophages and things get more irritated and inflamed. Since some of the chemicals brought in by the aerosol aren't being removed, they further irritate and inflame the lungs. Over time, if you continue to vape, more of these chemicals will build up. Eventually, the lungs become so irritated and inflamed, a person isn't able to breathe or process oxygen on their own. And here are some chest x-rays that show a normal lung and lung damage from vaping, where you can see the swelling and irritation. Educating our children regarding the dangers of nicotine and vaping starts with a conversation. Sit down and talk with your children. Let them know you love them and do not want to see them hurt, but also let them know that you would be disappointed if they were to start smoking or vaping, and that there will be consequences for using. Use teachable moments to start that conversation. There are plenty of television shows, movies, and music that depict people vaping. If you are with your children and you see someone vaping, use that as an excuse to talk to them about vaping. Ask them questions on how they feel about seeing people vape or if they know kids that vape. Don't just lecture, engage your children in a two-way conversation. Being a good role model is another way to show your children how dangerous vaping can be. If you smoke or vape, there are free programs that can help you to quit. And finally, we need to make sure our children have healthy ways to manage stress and anxiety so they do not turn to nicotine or other substances to cope with daily stressors. One of the best gifts we can give our children is teaching them healthy coping skills. No matter how old we are, everyone experiences stress and anxiety. Recognizing when our children are in distress and encouraging them to work through the experience with a healthy coping skill will enable our children to utilize these skills as they grow older and produce happy and healthy adults. Healthy coping skills are an essential part of preventing substance use. To help manage stress, make sure your family gets enough sleep, eats healthy, exercises daily, and takes time to enjoy a hobby or just to take a break. And most importantly, talk to each other every day. Teach your children to take deep breaths when they are anxious or stop and count to 10 when they are angry. You can make stress balls or glitter bottles as a family and teach your children how to use them. 
meditate or do yoga together. YouTube has several meditation videos for your family and virtual calming rooms. You can find hip hop meditation, guided imagery meditation, or progressive muscle relaxation. Finally, hosting a family movie or game night provides another fun way to unwind and relax. Do a puzzle together or get out crayons or chalk or Play-Doh and color together or make a craft. Art, music, and sports are great activities to help with stress. Read, take a walk, listen to music, plant a garden, or ride a bike. Please visit our website at cocaburks.org slash summer camp. There you will find educational videos for you and your children that provide a more detailed examination on nicotine and vaping. In addition, we provided you with more resources on managing stress and how to make stress balls and glitter bottles. And most importantly, visit our website if you or a loved one needs help quitting. We are here to help and we have free tobacco cessation programs available. Once again, I'm Teresa Detweiler. Thank you for watching Prevention in Pajamas. If you are participating in our Summer Camp Challenge, don't forget to color in your game tile that you watched this video and please visit our website 